praise somebody give the Lord a praise Hallelujah. praise God good to see you all in the house and thank God for those who are joining us online we want to get as much time as we can in this thing because it's warfare time hello somebody and every day it's warfare but we have spoils to receive amen trophies of war and spoils from the battle amen to receive in Jesus name so we don't praise and and worship just just praise and worship we praise and worship and expect to see results amen praise God and God wants us to have some results that are well pleasing before him and bring honor and glory to his name and without faith it is impossible to please him and to attain and to receive those victories in Jesus name and faith without works is dead so we have to activate our faith and and move to another level what you say praise God praise God all right we're gonna get we're just gonna set the atmosphere for what God is gonna do with some prayer in the house come on let's start to talk to God and just acknowledge him in the house praise God father we thank you for your anointing for your grace for your power for your presence we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin your name that is above every name the name of Christ is a strong tower we, with the righteous run into it and they are saved you declares a name above all name you've exalted that name to reveal your power in the earth to reveal your kingdom your sovereignty your lordship that from the lowest place to the highest place hallelujah Christ is all in all and that all will know that they only have their existence and life and 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 experience in him anything outside of him is dead and perishing and and will vanish away but you hallelujah gave to us that eternal life in christ jesus our lord and we thank you lord for the grace to access this life hallelujah and to see it manifest in us through us and around us hallelujah as we yield to your authority and your lordship in our lives we know that chains are broken hallelujah we know that demonic agents tremble and crumble at our feet and they are powerless against your god because you declared all power is given unto you both in heaven and in earth and we stand in that name and declare you are lord you reign upon the land you reign upon the sea you reign over all the earth everything every power is subjected to your power hallelujah and you have given us power over all unclean spirits and over all the power of the enemy you said we shall tread upon lion and scorpion and serpent and they shall do us no harm in the name of jesus you will cause them to become our footstool in the name of jesus and we come against them now in the name of jesus every serpent time spirit every spirit that you serpent and and working around this place let them be cancelled driven back chased out of this place now in the name of jesus and out of the atmosphere let this atmosphere you know, be conducive for what you're about to do in the hearts of your people oh god in the name of jesus remove every stress and anxiety and fear distraction illusion and delusion confusion and distortion we bind and shut down in the name of jesus we release your anointing in the atmosphere you now your anointing over your people your anointing hallelujah through the room hallelujah over the ear right now and that anything that is not of you will be choked and evicted out of this present all of this era now in the name of jesus let your favor and grace surround us now like a shield in the name of jesus like a shield in the name of jesus chase out every spirit that's lurking and crawling and creeping and flying over this atmosphere now remove them by force let your angel coast be as a wall of fire around us now in the name of Jesus expose and demolish their, their walls expose and demolish every connection, every 
every point of card to us oh god cut and sever and destroy now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus let the grace fill the room now let it fill the hearts of your people every lethargic spirit you command it to go in the name of jesus every dead spirit every unclean spirit you command him to back off out of this place now in the name of jesus we bind and shut down the evil way we command him to flee out of this place in the name of jesus christ we release the blood of jesus over the atmosphere the blood of jesus around this territory the blood of jesus over the air blood of jesus over their people the blood of jesus over the city right now the blood of jesus over the nation the blood over the caribbean the blood of every person who's hearing and connecting with us now that they will sense a shift in the atmosphere around them and know that truly you are manifesting your power oh god for their deliverance for their healing for their miracle let their spirit man be built up now in your presence that the innermost being be strained with might from on high in the name of jesus hallelujah every dark cloud we expel from over their heads and over their lives and we pray that the light of god hallelujah will shine upon them and shine in them and shine through them them hallelujah and drive out every dark spirits hallelujah drive out every he every encumberment and every encroachment of demonic agents and let your presence your holy spirit hallelujah just fill the room just fill the room lord just fill the room charge the room with your akoshama city with your glory right now hallelujah in the name of jesus and we give you the praise we give you the glory we give you thanks father we honor you and praise you in jesus name come on give him the praise right now ah you got a better praise than that hallelujah praise god praise god all right be seated for a moment we're gonna get into the word and some spiritual warfare that the church needs to do hallelujah the church is called to do warfare against satan and against his evil host amen believers must do warfare with satan hello somebody warfare against all his plans and his traps and snares because those things will hinder will block will he will draw you down will cut short cut and cut you off from the benefits and the, and the privilege that god have for you in the house of god hello somebody and the first thing the believer must must war against is sin hallelujah you must be war against sin that is what is called the works of the devil hallelujah the works of the devil is oftentimes called the, the works of the flesh hallelujah call what the, the works of the flesh galatians 5 verse 19 to, to to 21 praise god for verse 19 to 21 tells us these are the works of the flesh the works of the flesh are evident which are what adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envy murders drunkenness revelries and the like of which he said i tell you beforehand but just as i also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god we got a war against sin amen hallelujah john it was what john hallelujah praise god john 8 praise god hallelujah verse 32 i think it's verse 32 or 34 hallelujah praise god from verse 32 jesus says you shall know the truth and the truth shall 
make you free and today we're wondering what kind of freedom he's talking about and 34 gives you a clarity of what jesus is speaking of there when he said they have not been in bondage to any man to anyone how can you say you'll be made free and jesus said to them as surely i said to you who what whoever commits sin is a slave of sin whoever what so that's what he they said truth will set you free from it will set you free from sin those who still indulge and embrace and practice sin don't know the truth if they knew the truth they would not be doing it come on now and he says then it is you know the truth and the truth will set you what free and they're wondering what truth set them free from because they said they are not in state to anybody but he said in the, the verse 34 whoever commits sin is in slavery to sin that's why it says whoever commits sin is a slave of sin and he says and a slave does not abide in the house forever there's a point where the slave will be cut off from having access in the house and he says but a son abides forever notice he's making a difference between son and slave He's not saying his son is a slave waiting to be set free. He said, there's a slave and there's a son. But he said, the son can set the slave free. Yes. Hallelujah. He says, therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free. Indeed, the son gives you the ability to be set free from sin. Come on now. The son what? Gives you the ability to be set free from sin. Hallelujah and so he told us there that you have to know that that's where the warfare is and you have to make sure that you you are free from sin not just forgiven of it but free of it hallelujah and to start what it's covered it's not covered it must be removed because he came to to save you from your sin not with your sin hallelujah so he told them who the son makes free is what free indeed and he says the son abides in the house forever but the slave does not abide he's in the house but he won't stay there in other words he'll be removed come on now so he says your only permanence dear then is to be set free from sin come on now hallelujah now many do not accept that point of teaching that Jesus gave even today because we find that persons are still believing they are sinners saved by grace and it don't be in the Bible say you are sinners it says you were sinners saved by grace were sinners they mean it must be a thing of the past not a present continuous tense and you say I'm saved no what would we what would we save from what is truth setting you free from <laughs> sin because lie is still sin <laughs> so it's there to set you free from sin so he says who knows the truth is set free from it hallelujah come on now who knows the truth is what set free from sin and who is the truth jesus jesus says i am the way the truth and the life no he said how can i ever live that life in such a sinful world how can i how can i what's the way how do we find that way to live such a life in this world how do we what truth are you going to tell us to know he says it's not something you are told to know it's someone you know to know do you get it someone you know and he says i am the way huh so he, he said it's not it's not a way i'm gonna show you and you walk this way and you go up there and there and go through this route and turn that corner no he says he is the one who is the way come on because thomas was asking him then then we're we're off if we where are you going are we gonna know if we don't know where you're going where i go you know and the way you know and thomas said lord then how do we know where you're going and we don't know 
But then how can we know the way? And he don't tell him, say, what you do, take three steps right forward and take three to the right and take a next, next card. That's what he told him. No, he says, I am the way. In other words, he is the root to that life. He is the root. He is the, the truth. He is the life. And he says, no one can come to the Father except through him. No one can really come to the Father except through the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise God. So it's, it's not about knowing Christianity. There are a lot of persons who know Christianity and still don't know the life. Still don't know the truth. Still don't know the way. Because they, are, they have come to know a religion. But they have not come to know him. And Paul wasn't preaching Christianity. Paul said he preached Christ. And him crucified. Come on now. So he didn't say he was preaching a religion. Amongst other religion and person to find out which one is the right religion. No. He said I'm preaching Christ. It wasn't religion that died on the cross and rose again on the third day it was not religion that ascended and seated at the right hand of the father it's christ and he says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father so the time is coming when every knee must bow. hallelujah the time is coming that men will come out of their graves and will stand on their feet that had, bodies had died already and they will still have to bow and confess that he is Lord but for many at that point it will be too late hello because the father knows their opposition to him being Lord that's why he says sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool so he says there are persons who believe Christ is not it he is a way, but he is not the way. There are many other ways to God. But that's not what Christ taught. And Christ told us that what he taught is what he hear the Father teaches. In other words, he said it is God's doctrine he's speaking. It's not his own. He's not telling the words how he wants to tell it to get some, some self-praise and self-honor. He says, no, I'm sent. The one who sent me told me to say these things. Come on now. And what he tells me, that's what I say. What I see him do, that's what I do. Amen. So he says, most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. What he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he also say what he hear the father speaks, that's what he speak. He don't speak his words of his own. He say, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. As I what? Hear. And as he judge according to what he hear the Father say, and not according to what he feel or think in his mind. He say, my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Come on. Hallelujah. So that shows that he's not operating of his own self. So he's telling you then, the first thing any believer have to contend with is sin. That's why the requirement for being a, a true citizen or son of God in the kingdom is that you must first repent. Repent, and he says, and be baptized, and you shall receive the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit as the first message Peter preached at the day of Pentecost in Acts 2 verse 38 to 41 and Peter preached that word and told him that the first thing they need to do is to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and he says every one of you not some of you not most of you he says what everyone hello so it's not some need to repent and be baptized. He says, every one of you be, be baptized, repent and be baptized in the name of Christ for the what? Remission 
of sins in other words that sins will be removed and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit you shall receive what the gift of the holy spirit he says hallelujah for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off as many as the lord our god will call and with many other words he testified and exhorted them saying be saved from this perverse generation be saved from this perverse he said this generation is crooked and my god corrupt and perverse twisted in their thinking reasoning and understanding and actions and he says it is truth that is going to set them free but they have rejected the truth they rather lies than truth they rather darkness more than light hallelujah and he says you as a believer must fight against that what we say yes man he says in john 3 verse 18 he who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe is what is all condemned already why because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love in other words they want opposite of what is offering because darkness is opposite of light <laughs> he says they, they they don't want what he's offering the light has come he says but men rather darkness more than light and the reason is given because their deeds were evil hallelujah and he says anyone who's doing evil don't want to come to the light in other words they don't want their deeds to be exposed come on that's what he said in verse 20 hallelujah he says for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deed should be exposed but he who does the truth look at that he don't just say who, you, who who's in the light but he says does the truth and he said who doesn't just so he says you, you're doing the truth that's what you're practicing righteousness he says comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen and that they have been done in god they say we know when people are in hiding what is the reason yeah, <laughs> yeah we know so he tells us those who do things in the light they come to the light yeah, yeah. that's right that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in god hallelujah so that's the first thing we got to fight against there's a warfare against that and i tell you most people believe no as long as a year you're gonna sin until the lord come because only in heaven we're not going to sin anymore and some want to go to heaven and rest where they'll never sin again hallelujah but it's not like that hey, those who listen to such things are just being deceived hallelujah you need to know the truth you need to what if you know the lord you will know that there's no sin in him if you know the lord you know that what there is no sin in him hallelujah and if you are in him you can't entertain and accommodate sin why you can't because it says the very nature of christ is against that and that very nature is in you who is in him come on now and it says there's no sin in him huh no sin in him and so he said if anyone be in him they are what new creation all things are passed away and all become new he says behold all things become new he says you can't be new doing the whole thing and call it new the old thing is not new the old way of life is a sinful life and now you can't be a new creation doing the same old life and saying you're new come on now 
so we must see the newness the newness of being in you because he says it's not just just have you get a new page he says you are a new creation a what a new creation all things have passed away and behold means to take notice to look intently at it says all things have become new come on hallelujah praise god matthew 20 matthew 12 verse 29 to 30 matthew 12 verse 29 to 30 hallelujah it says how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless what he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house he who is not with me is a against me he who does not gather with me scatters abroad there is no neutralized zone with christ it's either you're with him or you're against him can't be with him sometime against him sometime to make up your mind you end up like judas hello somebody you have to make up your mind what side you're on so it says if you first note about that scripture jesus is telling them you are not able to take your goods from the devil you are not able to disarm things that the devil who is a strong man has unless you bind him first the same way he's saying then if you have a thief that is in your house if you don't bind that thief no matter what you put in there it's gonna be, it's gonna go it's gonna be taken away so he said your goods is not safe with a thief in your house until that thief is removed and so he says then if you still sinning you are entertaining that thief in your house got it so no goods you have in there is safe hallelujah so he says then unless he first binds the strong man he cannot plunder his house so if, the, if the enemy don't bind you he cannot plunder your house he have to bind you but the son said if the son set you free and the stronger one than that strong man stands with you you cannot bind that one who they bind you and now enjoy the benefits of what is given to you no so praise god so he says he who is not with me is against so he was telling them you have to know then that which side you're on are you for christ or against him but there's no neutralized zone in that aspect where you can say no i'm not for him but i'm not against him huh? no you need to make up your mind is either you're for the thief or you're against the thief and they can't be using the thief sometime when he think you're pleasing he pleasing you and then at that time you don't like unrobbing you <coughs> as there's no loyalty with thief right so he says then you need to get him out of the house what you say you need to what get him out and that requires spiritual warfare come on now hallelujah you got to train your mind not to indulge in thoughts that entertain sin thoughts that what entertain sin the word of god say you must your mind must be you are transformed by the renewing of your mind so if you are a new creation in christ a transformation took place but he says how does that transformation take place by the renewing of your your mind and so it's saying that you have to learn new things a new way of thinking than how you used to think before because that way of thinking before had a lot to do with the practices that you were doing and had a lot to do with how satan was able to take advantage of you in those practices and take away things that god intend for you to have huh? and destroy things that god released to you I see so he says you you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what what is that good is not just what is good but he put out that good because the world calls some things good that what god is calling good go surpass that you get what i'm saying and he says this renewal of mind is what brings you into that good 
an acceptable and perfect will of God. And he didn't say that he will test. What is that good? He didn't say you will try. What is that good? He said you will prove. It's a sure thing. You will what? Prove. You're not trying to test something that you're proving. And you're proving it. You already know it work. And I dare to show say this is why it work. But the tester don't know it will work. And I say, well, we will try and see if it will work. If it don't look like it will they say, no, it don't look like it working. Come on. But this is not no tester. This is to prove. And he says, your mindset has to change to get into that mentality and that kind of attitude to have this kind of result. You get it? Hallelujah. And Jesus said it already that anyone come, they must come like a child. Anyone coming to the kingdom, he said they must come as a child. He said they must come with their mind, with a spirit of humility. Grace will be released to them. Come with us with a spirit of, as, as passion and zeal to learn and to receive new instructions from the Lord. Rather than coming and think, I know it already. They mature and they fool. So you can't give them nothing more when they fool. Right? So it says, if you come like that, it says, then, then you will then become great in the kingdom. Come on. He says, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of God. And he's talking about humility. And you and the people being not having no voice and having soft voice, that don't mean to the humble. And it's humility have to do with submission and accurate response to truth. So persons can be very proud and be very mild about how they show their pride. Talk to me. And so this is not no false humility and world humility. This is about the fruit of the spirit birthing. And if fruit of the spirit bear witness with what? With truth. The Holy Spirit always bears witness to what? Truth. So if there's a resistance and defiance and resistance to truth, it's not the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus didn't just take any child and carry an image. Because if he take a child that is fighting and pulling away and crying and want to go to mommy, that would not be the demonstration he was giving to, the, to his disciples. So he was... He was specific about which child he's using to be this tool of demonstration because he says he called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them. He called that child came and set him in the midst of them and said as surely as it unless you are com converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever arms himself as this little child, the child is being used as a tool to teach, and say the way this child left the mother, left father, and come unhesitantly straight to me, say, that's who is great in the kingdom. Many don't come like that. They come, you know? Come on now. And say, well, I have to test the water first. I have to check it first. If it don't settle well with me, I don't feel comfortable with it. That wasn't the child Jesus was demonstrating. It, so he's identifying the spirit in the child. Because that there are other children with different spirit. <laughs> so it's not just any child. Hallelujah. Because every child don't respond like that child. And there's a reason why he say, this child, this little child, whoever arms himself as this little child, is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Come on. There's an attitude that child comes with that he says, this is an example, perfect example of what I'm looking for in you. Glory to God. Come on now. 
so so that wasn't common amongst them hallelujah what he's showing you if you don't have that attitude towards him and towards the word and towards who he has sent to unveil the word of truth to you you can't access the kingdom of god now you can't explore and know the greatness of the kingdom in your life because it's not something you attain by yourself you get that one it's not something you attain by yourself it's something you are trained and mentored and guided into that's why the disciples couldn't go into it without someone discipling them and they didn't become apostles without Christ our, our high priest and apostle training them to be apostles in other words they just just coming up themselves so. come on now because even Christ is being trained and that's a new concept for most of you even Christ is being trained because Christ says what he says is not what he chose to say is what he hear the father say that he says what he do is not what he chose to do he says what I see the father do that I do so he's following somebody even he is not doing it of himself and he's Lord come on so you would do, come and do it of yourself and, and get it and you are not greater than the Lord so that's why the principle remains he says even his judgment of how he judge things is not of himself he says as I hear so he's hearing someone else judge and then speak the judgment you hear and he said that's my father come on now so who are the, are are you listening to to make judgment <laughs> that would be the real, the real question there who are you listening to to make judgment hallelujah he says because he says i do not seek my own will I do not what seek my own will but the will of the father who sent me come on so when we take on the mind of Christ are we seeking our own will no those who seek their own will even naming the name of Christ don't know Christ yet they need somebody to mentor and train him in the word of righteousness to know him somebody must preach and declare Christ to them they didn't just sit in a room and know him because Paul wasn't making these people understand or know Christ by them sitting in a room and study and meditate till they know Christ for themselves. He says, I preach Christ to you. He said, that's what I'm declaring to you. I'm declaring Christ to you. Come on. So he says, it's not about me. If you just look at me and don't see Christ, you're far from it. You can't be discipled. Because it takes grace to see what God wants you to see you know because your carnal and physical understanding cannot attain it that's why it says the natural man does not understand spiritual things so if the natural senses you're relying on you're not going to get it you could have right like a uh, what do you call him again Einstein uh, you cannot get it because this is not because you have no IIQ. Right? This has to do with you submitting to the grace. Submitting to what? Submitting to what? Submitting to what? Grace. Grace requires submission. Grace requires what? So that's why the sinner cannot be saved till he repents. 
You cannot continue to be a sinner and be saved. So that's why repentance is the first requirement laid on him to be saved. And that repentance requires submission. He has to humble himself to get it. It's not just handed out. God wants everybody saved. Everybody saved because all things are possible to God. It's not like that. Because God already said he will that none should perish. So why are people still perishing? Come on. He said even when you're born of God. He said it is not of the will of man. So why are you not saved still even without your will? Since he said you are born of God. And not of the will of man. Is it? If you don't humble yourself, you don't get it. That is a requirement God set for you to get it. It's not a requirement you set. It's one he set. Correct. And if he set it, then you can't come and change it to get it. Hello. I just love how God do. Don't you love how God do things? Yeah. yeah. I mean... God could have set it up some different way, but he set it a particular way that the, the proud can't enter this thing. Because the root nature of the one that fell out of heaven and fell with a third of the angels called Satan, Lucifer, the devil. The root nature of that one you know, is pride. You know? And God not having that there. Because God set a principle in his kingdom that those that exalt themselves shall be abased. And that rule, even Christ himself was not exempt from that rule. Because Christ himself, the word of God says, he became humble. He learned obedience even to the death of the cross it says finding himself in the form of a man he humbled himself and became obedient even unto death and he says because of that humility and that loyalty of obedience even when he know that he's gonna die being obedient he says therefore the father has highly exalted him so even he was not exempt from the rule whoever humbled himself shall be whoever exalt himself shall be he's not exempt from it so if he's not exempt and he never sinned will you be I just love how God set up this thing. Hallelujah. Don't you? Uh, you love it later. Hallelujah. So he says, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and what? He came obedient to the point of death even there. So he just didn't say death, but he, he says even to show the kind of death he humbled himself to. Come on now. The kind of death he humbled himself to is the death of the cross. Now, remember he said to Peter, he has the power to call what? To have legions of angels. Correct? Right, so if he has the power to call legions of angels, he could have stopped the process. Talk to me now. I mean, there are several times that, that men came to stone Jesus. So he didn't have to go to the cross. He could have stand up and say, well, I came to die, so let them stone me. That is even better than the cross. Come on. That is even better than the cross because one lick of stone in your head can't kill you alone. No? 
You don't want to take a lot of it to kill you, but when persons drive nails through, through nerve centers and through the bone and marrow and through the board to tag you on a board, that is far more painful. And it is set in a certain way for you to live in the pain for our endured process of time. It doesn't take hours for a person to die when they are being stoned. In a matter of minutes, they are dead. But it took hours of Jesus and the cross to die. So it is meant to be very painful and for the person in the position to end your pain and torture for a long period of time until they die. So he didn't have to run. When they still come to stone him, he could just say, well, I came to die anyway. But that wasn't the death he humbled himself to. Talk to me. I said, that wasn't the death. You're with me here. Because it says, even the death. Did it say that? It says, he became obedient to the point of death. But then he just didn't say, just death. He says, even the death of the cross. He's saying, that kind of death. Praise God. Hallelujah. Will you sit in this row here? Praise God. Sit in this row. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he says, if you understand the principle then, then you will know then that when you come into a connection with God, there is something that the devil is going to do to give you shortcuts to say he still get what God want but you don't necessarily have to do it God's way because he could have died several times and still die for the sins of men being that is one that never sinned but he said it is the death of the cross is the one is the kind of death he's appointed to. You listening to me? And that takes humility because most if they have the choice to choose what kind of death they have, will not choose that one. Will not choose the most excruciating. Come on now painful, long, suffering, one, then die. No. Come on now. And there are several times the devil created options for him to choose another. Several times person come to stone him and he ran away from them. Stephen was stoned to death. Stephen didn't run away from them. Right. So he says, you have to understand the principle that was there where he's saying that this, even the death of the cross, is of being the father to the point where he says to death. But he says, even that kind of death. You got it? And that requires what? Humility. Now most believers lack that humility. They believe that humble means that you don't hear the voice. Or they have a soft voice. You never hear them arguing or you never hear them voice on the street. So that's a very humble person. So like you know much ants. But they don't understand that humble doesn't have to do with your tone or lack of tone or softness of voice. It has to do with your willing and obedience to the word at all cost. That is humility. So the world have a false humility. Mm hmm the world will tell you, most people ask, they will tell you, say, the most proudest people they know are those who are rich. 
tell me the truth. But I've met some poorer people than them that are very poor. And by no means, although the rich, being rich, will stretch hand for help to other organizations. The poor will stand up and say, you know, why you help, you know? We stand up and say, Leave me alone. Mind your business. Want to help you. And the multimillionaire, we pay for help and I'll borrow help. Figure that one out and tell me who is more proud. Right, so you will get it. So you understand it's not about what you have and what you don't have. Pride is not about substance and goods or what they call the wealth or luxury of your life. It has to do with an attitude. An attitude that that is vaunting itself. You get what I'm saying? And putting self above what God says do you hear that and Jesus never did that he had the power after fasting 40 days and 40 nights and the devil said turn this stone into bread the word of God said and when the fasting had ended the devil said so if the devil is saying Turn the stone into bread after the fasting had ended. He's free to eat. He's free to eat. But did God tell him to use his power to turn stone into bread? See? You see, a son of God is not just someone who has power and because he has power he says that must be a son of God no he says a son of God is a son with power under control is a son with power under control you're hearing this one son with power what and let me show you something. Oftentimes, people see this pair of power, they say, What a mighty man! Man of God! Come on. But is, does he have power under control? Is he submitted with the power to the higher power? Get it? Let me give you one example of that. In Acts chapter 8, a man was there exercising power over the whole of Samaria, a whole city called Simon. They call him Simon the Sorcerer. But he displayed power that people call him the power of God. They called him the power of God. Watch it. Come on. Look at it. Not just the power of God. They say, this man is the great power of God. <laughs> but was he submitted to God? No. But the power that he had, he had power over the whole city from the least of them to the greatest of them. And they were astonished they were what? Astonished at his power. Said it in verse 9. Who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. He had power over them from the least to the greatest. That's verse 10. They all gave heed from the least of them to the greatest, saying, This man, come on now, is the great power of God. 
but he was not submitted to Christ now one man came who was submitted to Christ Philip and shifted that whole thing look at what it happened verse 12 but when they believe Philip as he preached the things what concerning the kingdom of God and as he's preaching about Christ and his kingdom the reign of Christ over the earth it says all power is given to me in heaven and on earth that was declared by Jesus before he ascended and Philip is now preaching that to them Philip is what preaching that to them and saying no no Philip here is not Philip as one of the apostles Philip here is Philip as one of them that were scattered from the assault that was done against the church in Jerusalem look at verse 1 and 2 they'll probably see that for their own edification it says now Saul he says that time Saul was not yet Paul converted to Paul as the apostle but Saul as a Pharisee a Pharisee persecuting the church he says Saul was consenting to his death that is to the said death of Stephen he says at that time a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem look at it now and they were what all scattered throughout the regions of Judea Samaria but who were all scattered the disciples were all scattered but the apostles were not look at it all were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles except the apostles the devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him correct yes as for Saul he made havoc of the church and turned every house and dragging off men and women and committing them to prison therefore those who were scattered now who were scattered it was not the apostles it was the disciples what you think therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word then Philip went down to the city of Samaria that was the reason when Philip preached to them ministered to them they baptized and received Christ Peter and John were apostles now had to come to lay hands on him for them to receive the Holy Spirit Philip could not do that because he's not Philip as one of the apostles he's Philip as a disciple one of them who were scattered let me show you something because I want to see something tonight what do you think now when the apostles were at Jerusalem heard that Samira had received they didn't go down there they heard what Philip down there do and they heard that Samira had received the word of God they sent Peter and John to them who when they had come down prayed that for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit because people receive the Holy Spirit at the point where the apostles laid their hands on them are declared or speak the word over them the Lord gave them that grace watch the thing now he says now they sent Peter and John to them who when they had come down prayed for them that they might receive what the Holy Spirit further for as yet he had not, uh, he had fallen upon none of them they had only what been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus many people once they baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus they say there it is I receive Christ that means I receive the Holy Spirit done deal that is not so in scriptures they were baptized but they had not received the Holy Spirit baptized in the Lord Jesus but not received now they tell you once you come at the altar and repent and confess your sin and accept Jesus you have the Holy Spirit don't they tell you that? That's not what the word teach. Now you know why some people behave like that. Why they say, I am Christ. Their behavior is far from him. Because the word of God says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. 
Come watch it, you know. So it says then, and when Simon, look at it. Oh, Simon saw that through what? Simon saw that through what? The laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. That's what Simon offered money to get the power to do. There it is. I didn't write it. I'm only preaching it. He offered them money saying, Give me this power also. Come on. The power he was paying for is not to receive the Holy Spirit. Now many read it and think says that he was saying he's not the, he's not paying because people are receiving it freely. It's not the power to receive the Holy Spirit was paying for. He was paying wanting to pay the apostles for the grace, the power God placed upon them to release the Holy Spirit to who they lay their hands on. That is the power he was paying for. Watch the thing. When Simon saw that through the laying on of whose hands? Fine. The apostle's hands. Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money saying, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands. I lay hands. Talk to me now. Now you have members think like that. Say, no, they may receive Holy Spirit. And anybody daily and receive Holy Spirit. And it's not so good. You know? The believers there knew that Philip that preached for a whole city to change. A whole city got baptized. A whole city believed. I mean, Simon the Sasser up to sell his witchcraft books. And gave up his witchcraft and come and say, get baptized in Jesus' name too. It is there, you know. <laughs> you need to read that scripture and just take time and go through verse by verse and hear what it is saying because witchcraft is a big thing here in Jamaica. You need to understand why persons can call a man who is a reader, a man passed and then says call church after we call it. Call it long time when they were saying nothing call no church call it. But when it was what who did up there, then they said, no, we're not just, well, that was a cult. What gave them authority to say it's cult after somebody dead? But when the person alive and teaching and doing anything wrong, and we say cult, they say, no, don't say it. We are all, all serving the same God. You need to know fruit. And if you don't know the scripture, guess what? The devil is going to deceive you. That's why God sent person to teach you the scripture. It's not about jumping, feel goosebumps and shout hallelujah. You need to know what the word of God says. Because the word of God is truth. And it's true to use to disarm lies. And disarming lies will save you from being deceived by the deceiver who is the father of lies. You get it? And in just like the Lord said, by their fruit you shall know them. But if you don't know how to judge what is a fruit, or why know them by their fruit? Somebody have to relay the information to you. Is it? Because you would know if you born yesterday and you, you're not going to get up and know what is up and what is mango and what is carrot. Somebody had to tell you that is carrot, that is mango, that is apple. Somebody had to relate to you. He didn't just come and have some six sense and know. Like some trying to have six sense to know some things in the scripture and it don't work so. God give teachers in the body to relay certain things to you. Are you hearing? Yes, grace is given, but God used channels to release that grace. Grace don't just fall so like rain. If grace fall like rain, everybody get it when they go to the door. Because what happened? No. But God said he, he gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So if he resists them, do they get grace? Can somebody be saved who is resisted by God? No. And who does God resist? Lord Jesus. Do you see why 
the world is not saved they will not come to submit to any leader in the church because they say he's a man and they say they can know God himself but God didn't come here as God to bring man to salvation God came as a man to bring man to salvation you see it and they still resist so when they resist will they be saved no are you hearing me so who does God give grace to hallelujah now some persons are going to be in amazement how others did sins that were far more gruesome and worse than them and still are forgiven cleansed and are saved while they did things that they thought was far more minor and mild and are not forgiven and end up in hell because no matter how light the sin or how deep the sin no matter how how the sin seems slight to one that seems very overbearing sin is sin and God said he's giving grace to anyone whether they commit the great sin or light sin anyone who humbles because that was the nature in Satan he did not humble himself pride was the cause of his fall and that nature is still operating in man come on now every sin is generated by pride every one of them is self-centered come on every sin you try to find one that is not self-centered come on that's why he says you have to deny yourself to follow him he's talking about humility hello and until people humble themselves until people what humble themselves they won't know this grace come on now they won't what they won't know this grace it will be like they have seen it but not seen how it relates to the life they're living you know, you somebody sees something and it, it look nice or it sounds nice, but it says, you know, that doesn't really connect with the life I'm experiencing. So they, they can't relate to it. And that's the reality I want you to know that if you don't humble yourself, certain understanding and connection you must have with the Lord, you cannot have it. Because God will not mingle with the proud be telling you not even his son into it with even his son had to humble himself to be exalted who never sinned come on now you following this hallelujah so we see then that 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 this man who had great power that he could influence from the smallest to the greatest in a whole city huh? with his witchcraft sorcery that people thought that the magnitude of the power he was displaying they felt like this must be the great power of god that was not something light to say no they were highly influenced by him and felt very strongly that this power was not the power of man but the power of God working through that man but when Philip went there preaching the gospel one who is submitted to the Lord what you think one who is what 
when he went preaching the gospel the word of God says demons were cast out come on now come on now hello Simon himself also believed and when, when he was baptized he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing what the miracles and signs which were done and that was when news was sent to the apostles in Jerusalem and Peter and John came down and ministered you see in it follow the passage you'll see it praise God and it says that is how they, they receive the Holy Spirit hello somebody so there's a grace tell somebody there's a grace that comes from connecting with the Lord that you cannot have by yourself there's a grace that comes from connecting with those who the Lord himself sent that you cannot find by yourself you see it is continuous the grace comes from God it comes through Christ it comes through who Christ sent it's connected it's a, I remember so there are some some businesses that that if you if you didn't um, it's the only persons in the business can bring you in the business you remember a lot of business like that they had come down here where you they, they you, they're making you like many business managers in the business but you can't just see the business online and just jump in it somebody have to sign you on so so you can't be an outsider and just pierce and just come in the business somebody have to bring you in but you need to understand that's the principle that the lord is using there no one come into the gospel without somebody bringing them in nobody got it by themselves i'm enlightening you on that because i know tricky that devil is to make pride rise up and say no me can't get it myself but he knows you'll be putting yourself in a position of pride where you'll be resisted by the lord God the Lord resists the proud. Got it? The Lord what? So if he gets you in a position of pride, he don't even have to fight you. <laughs> he don't even have to fight you for you to lose. Because if the Lord resists in you, You see? Are you seeing what I'm saying? If the Lord is resisting you, it don't matter how much time you pray and you fast during the week. And how much time you say the Lord's prayer. Come on. If you put on sackcloth and ashes and stay out in the sun all day, till the sun bake you out there, you, you will find out that you have to submit to God's way. It's not just abasing yourself and say, because I abase myself, I am humble. It is really about submitting to God's way. You got it? So you can't say you're humble while you're still doing it. Your way. Because even Jesus didn't do it. His way. So anyone following the way must do it how Jesus did it. Hallelujah. You're hearing it. You're hearing it. Come on now. Now many of their way, they plan their life, they plan out what they want to do, what they want to accomplish and how much time they're going to accomplish it. The world has taught them to do that. It's not the Lord that taught them to do that. Let me make it very plain for you. It's not the Lord that taught them to do that. There's no scripture that taught them to do that. So it said then still is the world that taught them to do that. 
and the God of this world has trained and set a system to make you think in a way anti-God in a way that opposes God rather than connects with God because he is by his own name and nature an opposer that's why it's called the devil or Satan which means enemy adversary come on so he's not there to bring you closer to the Lord lies don't bring you closer to truth <laughs> come on somebody and he's the father of lies you got it right so we know say if you it's not that we're saying then don't plan nothing for your life but we saying to you think about god instilling desires to you for your plans rather than you instilling your plans by your desires that's kingdom now those who don't know that life will never know what i'm talking about even if i put it as plain as that they will still not get it because they, are, they, have, they have already been trained to put their desires first. <sighs> Come on, somebody. Not recognizing that in God's desires, all their desires are met. In God's desires, say it. All your desires are meant but if you don't trust god you run after your desires and try to have him approve what you are desiring without knowing what he desire so it's putting you first rather than him first that's why it's grounded in pride and he says he resists the proud grace will be withdrawn from you and your walk is going to be strenuous and frustrating and difficult because grace makes something that is difficult become easy you hear what i tell you grace release an anointing and cause this you to engage in the supernatural that what will be strenuous naturally you find supernatural strength to bear it But those who don't submit don't know that life because they are excluded from that grace. So we, we, we want you to be released in the grace. What do you say? We want you to be what? Do you want that grace? When a person is out there ice skating, and I tell you, I'm not getting up out there, go try no ice, night a roller skating, no ice skating. But I tell you, because if you never done me young, you're not going to do me these old bones now. Hallelujah, praise God, they're not going to broke, never broke, then they're not going to broke, no. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> when I see them, what they call ice skating, or figure skating, and <laughs> And a blade of skate so out on the ice. And doing some twist and turn and spin and flip up in the air and come back and <laughs> come on now. So, so I, I look at them and I say, Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. They dance so gracefully. You ever heard that term? They dance so gracefully, they dance like it's nothing at all. Not, you see, we are nice. <laughs> it look like it's not even nice. Sometimes it look like it's just in the ear. Yes, man. Beautiful. But, but, but why they call it, say they dance gracefully? They are saying because they are doing some difficult moves and it looks so easy. They make difficult moves look what? Easy. Come on. Grace 
has that the grace of God has that impact upon your life the grace of God of what that imp so grace doesn't exclude you from trouble Lord Jesus I'm talking to you I say grace doesn't exclude you from trouble grace doesn't exclude you from trials grace doesn't exclude you from hard times it doesn't exclude you from the onslaught of the enemy but what grace does is undergird you to make what was difficult bearable and what was hard become easy and you know that is grace because you know if that wasn't on you you would have cracked under the pressure and could not withstand what was coming against you God's got abundant grace for you I don't hear anybody in this place because the Lord says we are sin abound good God Almighty so he says yes the devil brought mess in your life with sin but God said I already provided Christ to take that away but that is not the end that Christ does take it away here is grace good God Almighty come on somebody here is what here is what anybody want grace you know so I don't know if any but you understand this thing so you can go there slaving with the world trying to run like a hamster on a wheel trying to get busy to make sure you work up some for your family and they tell us if you don't work hard you won't have none lord jesus but jesus says come unto me all you that live and are heavy laden and i'm gonna give you rest all the children of Israel knew that work, work, work under Pharaoh for 400 years. But the Lord says, I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to give you what? Rest. Grace was being released to them. I say grace was being released to them. Because how does someone manage 40 years out in the wilderness? Walking up and down and their foot, their feet never swell their clothes didn't wear out 40 years you have clothes last so long <laughs> that's grace they don't have no support there to buy new clothes so what clothes lasting so long in the wilderness in the desert walking so much Ill that all that distance and dry ground why aren't their feet being swollen grace i say grace so it's a journey that should take 11 days 40 years you know what it is to walk 40 years oh my god come on and it says their feet did not swell their clothes did not wear out my god come on somebody then if god could minister grace to them even when they're under the law how much more can he do for you now i don't hear anybody you look like you you come for somebody to slap an onion and throw some oil and give you some special water and say, You heal, you heal, you heal. And you leave still end up in the same mess because you don't understand how grace works. That you have to humble yourself. Humble yourself and grace. Humble. Anytime you feel things start to dry up, start to slope, start to itch up, humble yourself again. Anytime you feel something, there's a struggle in your prayer, there's a struggle in your breakthrough, there's a struggle in your release. Humble yourself again because every level you humble yourself, more grace is coming. More grace is coming because any point you get stiff and redundant and resistant and, and bitter and hard, you can't resist. Receive it. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching you something tonight to keep the flow going. 
somebody need to keep the flow going somebody stirring up see the flow come and then it stop the water come and then it trickle and then it dry up and you have to wait and it to trickle again to come up again so you don't realize there's some inconsistency there you have not learned some things you have to learn from phase one to carry over in phase two so you keep on repeating phase one that's why the 11 day trip took 40 years they repeat in the same class come on somebody you got it you have to determine if you want to come out of that class i'm talking to somebody you got to determine i say you got to be determined you want to come out of that class and if you want to come out of that class that means you want promotion you want to go to a higher grade no sir and he says this is how you get to a higher grade you must humble yourself <laughs> you must what you must what because he said the more you humble yourself more grace is released and grace lifts you up this word of god says those who humble themselves shall be shall be shall be didn't he exalt the son won't he exalt you come on somebody so he says this will not change but if you humble yourself in his sight he will tell somebody if you humble yourself in the sight of the lord Come on, because you can behave humble in the sight of men and you don't humble yourself yet. But he said, if you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Come on, say it again. If you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, he will lift you up. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You got to understand this is not about the things and the bills and the things you have need to do. God is looking at bigger than that. He's looking at your heart. All the issues of this life are just tools in place that God wants to use to create the kind of environment for the heart that he wants to mold in you. So it's not about the things. It's not about the experiences. It's about what it produces in you. You hear that one. So it don't matter how much experiences you have. If you don't produce in you, you're still in grade one. Until it has produced something in you. Say, no, you're ready for grade two. Because God has a principle that he will not give you more than you can bear. And you can't bear certain things without a level of grace to bear it. And you can't have certain level of grace to bear it if you don't have a certain level of humility to receive that grace. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Anybody getting anything out of this? This is dangerous information hallelujah i said this is dangerous information the devil is shaking in his boots right now for you to hear it because he knows if you put it into action my god you're going to become like a knife through butter you're going to cut through some obstacles and some injunctions like they weren't even there because every time you come to that place of impossible you just humble yourself and god just cut it loose hello somebody but you have to have that that practice you, oh, oh, Shama. it can't just be something you do once in a while it have to be a life Because that's how Jesus did it, even unto death. He humbled himself and became obedient, even unto death. Even the death of the cross. You with me, somebody? So you want to feel the power of God manifest and see the effects of that power start to radically change things in your life. I'm talking to you, my people. 
learn how to humble yourself and when you learn it already learn it again and when you learn it already again learn it again again because each time you're learning it, you're applying it on a deeper level and every time you apply it on a deeper level something great is coming from god to you come on somebody that will allow you to ascend to a higher place to a higher dimension to a higher level of view and focus and vision that god wants you to have but because of your position, you can't see over some things that are higher than you. But when you are elevated, when he says you humbly serve and God will lift you up, he says your view change. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. And that's what you need to break into this next level. Are you with me in this place? Come on, stand. We're going to pray. We're going to break some yoke tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord in here.